American Pharoah really gets tested this time. Two guys in a classic are back, Brad Weinstein, Joe Christofek. And if he were to get through unscathed, maybe we'll get the matchup of the century, the best girl in the world, the best boy in the world, American Pharoah and Beholder, which is where I want to start with you because Beholder was unbelievable at Del Mar last week. Well, if it was up to Ronda Rousey, she'd fight Floyd Mayweather, right? So, you know, why not Beholder and American Pharaoh? She was sensational. If I were her connections, I would have made her name two words, Behold Her. She galloped. She poured it on like the Toronto Blue Jays offense in the Pacific Classic, dusting the boys for fun. And she belongs in the Breeders' Cup Classic. We'll reveal our top ten list a little bit later on, Bram, but uh, she could not have run any better. So you say she belongs there. We'll see if she takes the bait from you to actually be in it because she's going to be at Keeneland, assuming health. We just don't know which race she's going to be in. We know the one American Pharaoh is going to be in. But first things first, for him this weekend at Saratoga, the field is much stronger than the one he faced at Monmouth about a month ago. So I think an upset is potential. There's a potential for an upset here. So I'd like to hear who you think among the contenders, if you could rank them, which ones do you think actually have the best shot to get them? Well, it's interesting. The horse that ran second behind American Pharaoh in the Haskell was Keen Ice. He ran great in the Belmont, too. And his arrow is pointing in the right direction, along with several of these others. So as you mentioned, it's not going to be an easy test for American Pharaoh, not to mention the fact that it's Saratoga. So I would go with Keen Ice for first on that list, Bram. Frosted and Texas Red ran two and one, respectively, in the Jim Dandy, both proven at Saratoga. And if you're looking for a potential bomber, what about Smart Transition? He appears to be headed in the right direction as well. And if you're really going to stretch it out, maybe Upstart, who could have a tactical advantage. All right, so we're on the same boat with the long shot here. I like Smart Transition with Johnny V on his back. I think there's a who knows potential with him, and I like what's around him. I think he's going to get a clean start, so I think he's got a shot. Keen Ice has got the distance. That's not going to be a problem. He's never really close to winning, though, so I can't really pick him here. Same goes with Frosted. He's got the distance, but he never actually wins races like this, and he had what was essentially a match race with Texas Red about a month ago, and Texas Red beat him. So in good conditions again, and based on what he did last fall, I think Texas Red probably has the best shot to catch American Farrell, who we both think is probably going to get out to the front. So why don't we just kill the intrigue in this? I think he's going to win American Pharaoh. You do too, right? Yeah, it's really tough to go against him, not only with my head, but with my heart. I'd love to see him, you know, go out on top with winning the Travers and in the Breeders' Cup Classic. And uh, like I said, I think Keen Ice heading in the right direction. I don't think he could turn the tables either, Bram, but if the race falls apart for some reason, maybe he's the right horse. Now, I'm going to go Texas Red as my long shot here. I don't know if that's a really fair thing to call him a long shot, but he's going to be 8-1 to one or better because the betting line is so high on American Pharaoh. So I'll use that and take that. With, uh, I'm using grain of salt. I'm calling him my long shot. Who is yours? Well, if, if a horse is one to five, then everybody else in the race is a long shot, right? So I'm going to go with Keen Ice as my long shot. He's 12 to one in the morning line. And uh, like I said, I think, uh, you know, he's the horse that's getting better and better and better. And you mentioned the mile and a quarter distance should hit him right between the eyes. And we see the same horses here. You gave me 30 bucks. You always change the number on me. I don't know why. But you gave me 30 bucks to bet this time. So I did it within an exact box. And this is a really just a just in case he doesn't win situation because if he doesn't there's going to be a nice payoff here because the odds are going to be high on anyone else who comes in so i put him in with five others upstart who i think is going to run out to the front with him and if he's at his best might have a shot keen ice frosted texas red and smart transition how are you spending your money well if it's a an american pharaoh and uh texas red exact the brand you're going to get back four bucks i'll add that to your bankroll next time <laughs> Who do you like? I'm going to get a little bit creative here. I'm going to key American Pharaoh on top of the tries. Upstart Texas Red Frosted, Keen Ice, and Smart Transition for second and third. Come back with Frosted and Keen Ice for second. And then come back with a cold $2 try with my last two bucks remaining. Pharaoh, Keen Ice, and Frosted. And try to maximize that 30 bucks and uh, turn it into about 150 or so. You are, you're the guy in line I'm standing behind so annoyed. I'm like, just pick American Pharaoh and move on. We all, we all know he's going to win. As for our classic top 10, clearly he's going to stay at the top of the list because he is the best horse in the world to this point until proven otherwise. I moved Beholder all the way up to two. I was that impressed. I moved Shared Belief out because it is unlikely he is going to race again this year, so I don't want to leave him in the list. What's your list look like? 
Yeah, right. I mean, we combined, and, and, and basically Beholder shot all the way up to number two. I think she was number nine last week. Liam's map also takes a huge move forward off of that second-place performance behind Honor Code in the uh, in the Whitney. Honor Code right there at number three is legitimate as well. And Bram and I wrestled. We arm-wrestled over number ten. I wanted Noble Bird. He wanted Keen Ice. Bram won, and all I wanted afterward was a cold IPA. I mean, all that's going on here over the last, like, five minutes is you saying how great Keen Ice is, and now you're telling me he's not even on your list of best horses in the country. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a little bit conflicted sometimes, my man. Breeders' Cup Challenge Series, Saturday, August 29th. This one is not a win in your end. The Traverse Stakes, it should be, based on the field. But the card in Saratoga is absolutely amazing. NBC, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I got one question for you as we say goodbye this week. Always love this part of the show. If American Pharaoh, this is a serious one. If American Pharaoh loses, will you think it was a mistake that they continued to race him? Uh, If he loses, I think they should take uh, Victor Espinosa off Dancing with the Stars. All right. For Joe Christofek, I'm Brad Weinstein, two guys in a classic. We'll see you next week. Field sent on their way to the roar of the crowd.